What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel, it's me Kaz at Lebo bringing you more infinite Madrid content. Now before we get into this video, we're just going to be covering Melia, which a lot of people wanted earlier from the live stream to me to cover. So here you go guys, I'm covering Melia. There will be others today as well, but for now it's Melia. And please do click like, subscribe and comment below to help the channel grow. I'm going to be covering a lot more content, so you can be sure to see a lot of it. Now let's get into Melia, where is she good, what does she do, what exclusives do, emblems, what's the best build. Auras, what are the best auras, and what equipment do we use on Armelia to make her the god S that everyone says she is? So we're going to get into it. Let's have a little chat. Let's have a discussion. Let's see why she is just so goddamn good. Um, her basic attack deals pure attack damage. So this one is nothing unless she's in Valkyrie form. Um, now, her second active skill, her first active skill, we should say, deals two stages of 200% attack damage each to a single enemy with a 40% chance to inflict a layer of health burning for two turns. The chance isn't huge, but once it's upgraded, it goes to 70% and we get a cooldown of one. So it's free turn cooldown on this. Now her passive is burning armor. There is a 60% chance to inflict a layer of health burning on the attacker for two turns when Melia takes direct damage that means when she's getting hit by an like a, a, a direct damage attack not damage over time that kind of stuff she's got to take damage from the enemy actually hitting her and then she has a chance to land health burning now valkyrie obviously shifts things up hugely familiar and this is where she becomes like just insanely good so she transforms into the valkyrie and gets all of her skills enhanced to three turns this effect cannot be removed and gains one more action turn after using this now it is a five turn cooldown even when it's been upgraded so bear that in mind as well but it's definitely the first skill you should be casting when you're trying to clear things um, once she's been transformed into Valkyrie, she obviously gets a new set of skills. It's not really a new set, but it's just the same same skills upgraded. So now her basic attack will deal 200% attack damage and also has a chance to land health burning. Um, it upgrades with further attack damage and extra chance. So we actually get an 80% chance to land these health burns, which is you know, that's a very, very good chance. Her first active skill does three stages rather than two previously, um, to have the same amount of chance to land the health burning. But it's so much better to use this once you've cast Valkyrie. So always cast Valkyrie first and then the second ability. Obviously, it does have a short cooldown, so you may find yourself using it, or if you're trying to save Valkyrie for the next wave, you possibly could get away with using this prior. Um, her passive is uh, Melia is immune to control effects and there is a 6% chance to counterattack when she takes direct damage. It cannot be stacked with the buff counterattack. Unlike Sigmund and Hardak and a couple of the other heroes, this cannot be stacked with counterattack because if it was, it would be absolutely game breaking and she's already game breaking enough. Let's be real about this. So. Health burn, obviously, uh, each stage of attack restores self health by 5% of maximum health when Melia attacks targets under health burning status. So when she's in this form, it means every time that she's, um, she's, she's attacking, she's restoring 5% of her maximum health when she's attacking anyone currently, um, under the health burning status. So, yes pretty amazing and you know we all know this already but uh, people wanted to hear my opinion on it now exclusive where does she become absolutely unreal well exclusive level one is pretty great because it increases her valkyrie uh, to last one more turn so that exclusive is always amazing now the second level exclusive is massive it's massive because when she actually casts valkyrie she puts health burning on all enemies for two turns instantly after casting uh that is nutty that is nutty um especially when you combine it with her Zonya. we will go into a team combo in that in a moment but for now we're going to talk about this at uh, level three she increases the damage dealt by health burning by 25 percent when she is under the valkyrie status now that again is another massive exclusive let's move on to her emblems what do we use how is she best built this is what I've come up with for my Melia build um, to, to really, you know, do some pretty nasty damage. We've got attack and support. If you want to snip this on the left, feel free. Um, I'm going to move myself back over now. So pause the video, snip it, go and build yours the same. I am back. 
Okay, so we're going to go through it quickly. Obviously, it's the attack enhancement. It's a damage dealt, but damage taken increased as well. This is all damage dealt. It's not just for, for uh, direct damage. When something says damage dealt, that means everything. Absolutely everything. Unless it says dot damage or direct damage, then it means everything. Obviously, we take unexpected attack as well. When a health is full, damage dealt is increased. Um, last stand to south dot damage dealt increased. Uh, pay off old scores. So the targets with the damage over time debuff, the damage over time dealt is increased too. Strength build up when self has a buff, damage dealt is increased. Brave enemies when attacking targets whose health is higher than self, damage dealt is increased. And when attacking targets whose health is above 50%, damage over time is increased as well. We take mastery. We always take mastery because it's it's a very nice modifier here. Moving on to support, we take the health. We take when self has a shield, damage taken is reduced. And before the end of the first turn of each wave, effect hit is increased. When inflicting a layer of buff or debuff successfully, self speed increases by 9 for 1 turn, up to 5 times. Uh, magic touch has a chance to reduce the cooldown of this skill by 1 turn when casting skills. And more is better. For targets with lower speed than self, effect hit is increased. So that is her emblems. Let's go and have a look at her auras, have a little discussion on those. Now you can see that my Dwarven Blessing Aura is very, well, it's massively upgraded. It's level 23 and that's because you can really, really focus into someone like Melia because she's used in a ton of content, the same as Lasagna, um, which are in the same tribe. So it's not fully upgraded yet. I don't, in fact, can I upgrade that? No, I can't, I can't, but I can upgrade the level a little bit. Um, all right, we'll do, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll put it to 25 for now. Now, obviously, this personally to me is the best um, aura until you get to Legend, period, because obviously self gains an additional of this maximum health, but it further increases when you're 50, uh, by 50% in Dwarven Ruins, which is massive because obviously when we're farming dungeons, it means we're getting an extra 50% health as well. Um, if you're looking at greens, you're going to want to be choosing the uh, range hit aura for the self effect hit up. If you're looking at blues, um, possibly the mastery expert aura will be nice. Um, I believe, isn't there another one? Do, 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 do. I am colorblind, guys, so it's hard for me to see the difference between blue and purple. Uh, I probably mentioned that before, you probably know about it. But yeah, I mean, the mastery expert aura is nice, um, increasing it by a certain amount, and then when self health is above 50%. Interesting, actually, would it be. Hmm, I'm going to have to test this, you know, to test if it's better to actually have this than the the health. I know the health helps with survivability as well, but if we can, this is higher modifiers. So if we were to stack our health in gear rather than mastery, that would be easier. Okay, that's something else to look to in the future. But for now, we're going to continue the way we are. Uh, mastery Surge Aura is um, Mastery is increasing and grants Mastery Surge all allies. This isn't really for her. That's more for a support. Someone like Hoff would benefit hugely from this. But you definitely want to be getting this Dwarven Aura. Um, other than that, other than that, you could possibly use Hitmaster Aura if you really lack in effect it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. And then Hit Grandmaster Aura is the almighty because it's health and effect it. This is the almighty legend aura that you can get for Milia. Um, we're going to go ahead and look into her gear now. Now her gear is always best to focus with. Um, to begin with, for beginner players, you're going to want to focus on affect it because it's very important that you have the high enough affect it so you can hit the enemies. We'll just check her, her skills, her, her stats quickly. They are pretty high. She has 500,000 health, which isn't actually a massive amount, but it's nice. Uh, she has 1800 speed, 80% uh, affected, and then she also has 143% mastery, which is a very big stat. Um, moving on to just the sets that we should be using. Affected sets are always very good to use. Early on, you could possibly do a mixture of one set of affected, one set of health uh, to help you with some survivability as well early on in the game. Potentially mastery, depending on your roles that you get. Um, feather sets are always pretty good health and speed, but you don't want to make her too fast, really. You know, you really want to, you, you really, the only way, you know what, forget, forget the feather set. You're going to even want to get the first aid set because you need to be getting that effective. Um, another nice set is the HP and mastery set. 
which is endurance that is a very nice set to have as well because it really does help with the health and mastery stacking but you will need to roll effect hit on these as well so these are your main sets so we'll go over those again so it's either it's either health set effect hit uh, mastery um, endurance set the accuracy set is very very good sorry i didn't cover that one a moment ago the accuracy set is very very good and the first aid set possibly but this it, these are better used elsewhere uh wouldn't really recommend it over any of like accuracy or endurance so that's where you want to focus what do we roll on our gear let me move myself into the center a second you're gonna be wanting to aim for mastery obviously speed as well speed is always good okay but the main stats you want to focus here are health effect hit and mastery consider speed as like the fourth and she must be faster than hazonia if you're using her with him we'll get to that in a moment um, obviously we have defense right here mastery and attack really bad roll on that piece but the fact is the effect set bonus from this set is too good to ignore that's why i've had to accept this piece the boots uh, defense rate health and attack again but it's the endurance set so again i ha i couldn't ignore these and you can see that she can so much further be upgraded too uh the ring that we currently have on did roll nice it went free into mastery which is very nice and a bit of speed Obviously, uh, the accuracy set or, or the accessory, sorry, is always nice because we have a high amount of health on those. Now, what do we do on our artifacts? Mastery is the way to go because it's a higher percentage. Then we want to choose effect hit with that or, um, or health rate if you can get that in there too. Obviously, for the second artifact, we're going to want to choose effect hit and mastery or health rate if you can get that as well. A bit of speed would be nice too. Um, for the final piece, you're always going to want to choose speed, and I say this on every video, you're going to want to choose that on any hero pretty much. Uh, you want to aim for effect it, health rate and mastery, obviously, unfortunately, I didn't get lucky here, but I may have actually gotten lucky from farming Marius. Have I gotten a piece or no? Let's have a quick look because I haven't checked. Mastery and health rate. No, okay. No, okay, uh, we're fine obviously not that lucky um moving on let's have a look at her or what she does where she used she, she's pretty much ever in a game she's going to help you in the campaign um i just want to check obviously we always do this on 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 our builds now we're going to put her in with Catherine, hisonia and just milia just to see how they do against um against campaign 12 10 and how yes i know we are very far advanced to majority but it's always a fun test um i'm just gonna manual this at the beginning here and then auto after because she'll cast valkyrie his on you will go after then exploding the health burn that has just been landed by milia um i'm moving myself back a second this is why it's important to have milia faster than his because if that's the case it means that his can really take advantage of his ultimate uh which means that he's gonna then blow up the health burn that milia has just placed on them I'm hoping we can kill before we start to cast again. I'm unsure if it's going to happen, but... Okay, it didn't happen, but that's how it went. Obviously into the final boss, and these two together will destroy this boss, just because health burn is so insane. It's so insane. I mean, Leah herself can stack a lot of health burn to the bosses. Really, she's a, she's a guild boss machine as well, because solo she can do enough and keep enough stacks on the guild boss to do enough damage um you know keeping five stacks of health burn is the key especially for guild boss now moving over to do, 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 faction abyss we could say um what we do we use in the faction abyss we obviously dragon tribe it's pretty tough coming up here so we're gonna go back and just go to say stage 20 put her in with just um let's just go milia and hazonia uh along with nasil we'll put nasil in there as well for the control just so we can see the amount of damage and the combination between these three heroes is pretty nasty as well we'll leave it on auto we're not gonna we're not gonna go uh, uh usually i'll have nasil get set to cast his skill two there which would have frozen everyone but that didn't happen because obviously it's not set in smart casting You can see in a moment when she is in Valkyrie form that she recovers a 5% health on each attack to anyone inflicted with health burn. She's dead though. So that didn't work too great, did it guys? But stage 20 is the tough one. 
probably his Zonya will struggle here as well unless we can freeze it. Okay, nice. Maybe it's very possible his Zonya can clear this on his own. I mean, no, <laughs> no. All right, moving on to, um, obviously it's hard to showcase her on her own solo. I mean, I could throw her into a dungeon and see what she can do to rum on her own. Let's just try and do rum stage. Let's try and do rum stage 24, just with Milia. Just on her own. Let's see how she does. Um, probably going to be too much. 24 is quite a high stage to be for solo farming, let's be honest. Uh, but you can see here that every time she gets hit, she's going to counter and she's going to heal herself, which is super, super nice. So that's wave one cleared. I'm unsure if Valkyrie won't be ready yet. So this is a wave we could get hurt on. Because when Milia doesn't have Valkyrie, she is open to, to dying. She is open to dying. And you can see her taking a ton of damage here. But now she's got Valkyrie, she's going to be recovering some health. And the other enemies died from the health burn. If it was in manual, however, I think this would have been a different story. Uh, let's target Naskama. Health burn. Uh, probably killed ourselves there. We could have actually hit the boss alone. Probably to kill the bosses. He does die super fast to, to health burn because he takes extra damage. Uh, that is one of his um, conditions. So that is, I mean, you can see how effective she is in that. She's she's great in every dungeon, I will be honest. Every single dungeon. She's health burn. She's going to be good everywhere we go. Um, she's also very good in guild boss. We know this. She did. We did showcase her doing that. She's doing about 58 million damage in guild boss level 5 at the moment. Um, PvP, she's not the best, but she can be used in certain teams, especially in advanced arena, to cause a lot of problems. Um, but you need very, very good gear on her. So I feel like I've covered enough on Malia. I don't think there's anything more to add on her. If I have missed anything out, or if you have a better build for her, please do click in the in the comment section below, type your message, and let me know. I'm Karzit Libble. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.